All right, this lesson will be about prime factorization, and the second half will include prime factorization with greatest common factor. The first strategy we will be looking at today is prime factorization with a factor tree. Uh, the method of a factor tree kind of relies on the breaking down of composite numbers until we arrive only at our prime numbers. So now would be a great time for you to review prime and composite numbers if you have not done so recently. Uh, please remember that a prime number is any number that only has two factors, one and itself. A composite number has three or more factors, meaning it can be divided by a number other than one and itself, if not more numbers than that. So we will be using the number 40 in all of our examples today for prime factorization. We will start off, we're trying to figure out a factor pair of 40 or what is a way we can split 40 into a multiplication problem. Uh, there's multiple ways we do this. We could do 2 times 20, we could do 4 times 10, 5 times 8, any of those factor pairs would work. One thing I like to do is if it's an even number, I always like to try to divide by 2. The reason I do this is because it helps me go from least to greatest. I'm looking for that smallest prime number first. But like I said, you could start with any factor pair. And if you do your math correctly, we will arrive at the same answer. So I know 2 goes into 40, and the factor pair would be 2 times 20. Now, every time you encounter a prime number in a factor tree, you're going to circle it. This circle represents the growing of a leaf and the end of that branch. Since I have two over here on the left side of my factor tree, that branch is done. It has a leaf on it. It goes no further. However, the number 20 is not a prime number. It is composite, so we have to continue splitting the number 20. Again, 20 is still even, so I am going to use my 2 as a factor for the left side. And then I know that 2 times 10 is 20. 2 is a prime number, so I circle it. 10 is not a prime number, so I need to continue breaking it down. 10 is even, so it can also be divided by 2. So I circle, and 2 times 5 is 10. Now, I need to remember my prime numbers, or else, if we have notes on this, you can go take a look at those. Uh, 5 is a prime number, so I'd circle that one as well. The last step of prime factorization is that you must rewrite it. You cannot simply do the tree and leave your answer like that. Instead, you need to rewrite it as 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. And all I've done to get these numbers is I've pulled down my numbers right from my factor tree. In there I had three twos, so my prime factorization has three twos, and I have a 5. A way to double check this is if I actually multiply this out, 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 2 is 8 and 8 times 5 is 40 so I know since my two numbers match I've done it correctly another we can thing we can do with this prime factorization is we can actually shorten it using exponents we would rewrite this as 2 to the third power times 5 and there are benefits to shortening it and there are reasons we shouldn't shorten it later on with greatest common factor we will want that expanded form this next method we will be looking at is called upside down factor cake. Uh, this method is not as well known as the factor tree and is truly only taught as an alternative or a differentiation to the factor tree. For those students who kind of are not grasping the factor tree, the upside down factor cake, or I shorten it and just call it factor cake, can be used as an alternative. Similar in methodology, except that it does take some knowing of prime numbers. Because what's going to happen is as we make this system, it's going to develop what looks like an upside down cake. So we're looking at the number 40. So I start with how I describe as kind of a large L to the left and underneath of 40. As you break down your composite numbers in the factor cake method, you need to make sure you are dividing by prime numbers only. So as we work on this factor cake, you will find that, let's see if I can highlight the area a little bit. Um, one moment. I'm going to highlight over here. Oop, that, that one, this one, okay. 
everything over here in this area is going to end up, and this is way bigger than it's actually going to be, but this will be prime numbers only. I'm just going to make note, prime, Oop, that was way too big. Okay. Here we go, excuse me for that. Prime numbers only. Okay. So as we're breaking down 40, we need to think of what is a prime number I can divide 40 by. Well, since 40 is even and 2 is a prime number, that's a good place to start. So outside of the cake, I'm going to put my number 2. This shows that I'm doing 40 divided by 2, and then what that equals go un goes underneath the 40. 40 divided by 2 is 20, so it goes in the next slice of cake, and I kind of draw another L around it. And again, we want to break down that composite number 20. 20 divided by 2 is 10, so we divide to the left, and we get our quotient underneath, and then we draw another L, it's kind of creating a new piece of the cake. 10 divided by 2 is 5, there's another piece, and then we get here, and 5 is a prime number, it's on the inside, we don't want, we need to get all the way down to a value of 1, because we want a candle on our cake, and the only way to get a candle on our cake is to divide all the way down until you get a value of 1. Since 5 is a prime number, we can do 5 divided by 5, which equals 1, and then that's when we kind of create our candle down here on the bottom of our cake. Upside down factor cake. If you turn your head, it looks like it's half of a cake, but it, instead of being right side up, it's upside down. So now, just like with factor tree, we need to rewrite our prime factorization. So it would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. And I pulled that right from outside this cake right here. Those are all my prime factors. We can also rewrite it 2 to the 3rd times 5, just like with factor tree. The second half of this video will be about finding greatest common factor with prime factorization. If you're not there yet, just go ahead and end this video now. If you are looking for GCF with prime factorization, continue on. Step one to finding the prime factorization of two or more numbers is to simply find the prime factorization of both numbers. In this problem, we will be looking at trying to find the GCF of 40 and 24 using prime factorization. In the first half of this video, we did find the prime factorization of 40, so I'm going to copy from there. You can look back earlier in the video if you need a refresher on how. We did split that into 2 and 20. We circle our prime numbers. 20 is then split into 20 and 10. I'm, excuse me, I misspoke. 2 and 10. Circle 2. Break down 10 to 2 and 5. I can circle my 2 because it's prime, and I can also circle my 5 because it's prime. The prime factorization of 40 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 5, and we are going to leave it in expanded form because later in this process we will need to be able to see every number instead of a shortened exponent. Now when I look at 24, I know I can split 24, I can divide that by 2, and 2 times 12 is 24, so I can circle 2. I need to split 12 even further or break it down. 12 can be divided by 2. That will be 6. 2 is prime. 6 is not, so I need to keep breaking 6 down. 6 can be split into 2 times 3. 2 is prime, and so is 3. So I have now have prime numbers at the end of every branch, which means I'm done. The prime factorization of 24 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. That's all we need to do for step one. Step two will continue the process for us. All right, step two of finding the GCF of 24 and 40 using prime factorization is to line the prime factorizations up one on top of the other. I have duplicated what we did on the previous slide, and all we need to do then is we're going to take our two prime factorizations, 
the one for 40 and the one for 24, and we want to line them up one on top of the other. So I'm going to use a little bit prettier text. I'm going to bring it in right here, and I just want to simply take these and line them up one on top of the other. Uh, as you're writing your prime factorizations, writing them one on top of the other, in order least to greatest, meaning that I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 and 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. You don't want that 5 or that 3 intermixed. It has to be least to greatest. And our final step, or step 3 of this process, is that now that we have the prime factorizations listed one on top of the other, uh, we are going to draw an arrow through matching numbers and bring that number down. Uh, one joke I kind of make about this is you can think of it as a couples only wedding, meaning that you, in order to attend the wedding, you have to bring a partner with you. So if we look in the number 40, we see there's this first two right here, and then there happens to be two down here. They do not always have to be one on top of the other. Instead, we just want to kind of match them up. So what we're going to do is you're going to draw an arrow through both of those twos and you bring your two down. And then we can look over and we see that we have another two and two that match up, meaning there's a two and 40 and a two and 24. We can bring that two down. And then there's even one more two and two. They match up. They can only match with the same number. We have five and three left over, but they do not have a match in the other. Okay, 5 does not match with 3, 3 does not match with 5, we can't send 3 with a 2, we cannot send 5 with a 2. They have to match together. So we're going to end up multiplying these numbers that we brought down because there's multiplication up above. You could technically bring that symbol down as well. And then we find that 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So then we'd say that our final answer is the GCF of 40 and 24 is 28. Please remember that you do have to write that in a complete sentence. Again, the GCF of 40 and 24 is 8.